out on the land where you're sitting by the water or sitting with an elder, right? And these stories that are sometimes passed off is come gather the kids for the story, but they are for everybody because they are teaching you how to live, as the introduction said, how to codify your existence in a very good way, when to plan, how to have diplomacy, how to make problem solving, how to make decisions, how to have uh, good relationships with your family and the animals and the environment, all things that we need or that we're failing at right in society, how to be good to the environment. These traditional stories were cut off from indigenous people through the boarding schools and all these other different uh, 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 machinations. And, uh, and I want to particularly read the story of Sky Bear because it's important that I share that. And it's we, we have time to get to that, I believe. When we think about the traditional stories they've been taking away from us, the sky, right, where all our stories are of the stars, they became Greek. And you look down on the earth, they, they're speaking English. So the sky is speaking Greek and the earth is speaking English. And now I can't communicate with it anymore. Because I look up there, there's nothing for me up there. It's, it's talking Greek. I don't, I, don't, I, have not, I don't know what's going on up there anymore. I lost that connection. And this is why I wrote uh, this book, Drumming and Dreaming, it's to reconnect our people back to the land. The waterways are a ceremony. And so when we think about the environment, how are we able to connect to that environment in, a, in that ceremonial way, making our offerings, going to the rivers? The Blackstone River, for example, which I'm there in the, in the French River, Dan, for example, cut off the salmon, eel, and other seasonal fish runs. And so cutting them off that cut off our ceremonies. And when the ceremonies are cut off, the people are cut off. They are dismantled and their spirituality is disrupted. Considering we only have 3% of drinking water to go around for the entire planet, and currently over a billion people worldwide are without access to clean drinking water. This should be a wake up call, but this is like right now, again, right now. And this is really astonishing. And again, these are things that most people probably don't realize, but there are over 320 toxic sites across North America within 50 miles of tribal lands. Keystone Pipeline, Alberta Tar Sand, the Ford Toxic Site in Jersey, or the Ajimawag First Nations Reserve just across Detroit, USA, with that's over... Uh, 60 petrol refineries, I think it has. You know, all these factors have had cataclysmic effects on people in the community. Uh, cancers, depressions, babies with low birth weight, health issues. In some reserves, the life expectancy is ages uh, 55. And uh, that's um, uh, Pine Ridge is one for, one, for example. So in the Native American way, relationships determine your identity. So if you're having an unhealthy relationship with the land, what does that do for your spirit? This goes for all of us in, in today's world. 